Well, it's time now for business. And this morning, we're taking a closer look at that referendum on Essa Kibo and the region's wealth in oil and minerals. For more, I'm joined in the studio by Karis Garland. Hi, yeah. So as we've heard a little earlier in, that, in the program, this is a dispute that goes back over 100 uh, years, but it really heated up after the discovery uh, of oil fields. Well, Venezuela claims that its border is marked naturally along the Essequibo River. Guyana, however, asserts the frontier was set in the British colonial era and was confirmed in 1889 by a court of arbitration. Well, the territory makes up some two thirds of Guyana and counts 120,000 125,000 uh, residents. We can see here not only does Venezuela uh, claim this piece of land uh, with the Essequibo River on the right there, it also claims uh, some of these waters. Now, in 2015, ExxonMobil uh, discovered oil fields in these waters uh, and tensions have been rising, in particular since September of this year when Guyana took bids for several offshore oil exploration blocks and after a major new find was announced in October. Well, Guyana may have oil deposits in excess of 11 billion barrels, which if developed will make its population richer than Kuwait or the UAE. And not only is it rich in oil, Essequibo is a source of minerals with large reserves of gold, copper, diamond, iron and aluminium, among others. Well, profits from its oil production are contributing to significant growth in uh, Guyana's GDP. We can see here uh, it went from t uh, just 5% in 2019 uh, to more than 40% in 2020, despite the pandemic. Uh, growth still impressive, but dipping slightly to 20% in 2021 before uh, reaching to more than 60% the following year. So huge economic potential from that region, uh, though the referendum was non-binding and didn't include the people that actually live in the territory, so uh, no major development is expected just yet. Well, in other news, Hong Kong, a uh, court in Hong Kong has extended a deadline that could lead to the liquidation of the world's most indebted property developer. Evergrande now has until late January to put together a restructuring plan. The company has reported more than $300 billion in, li in liabilities, and a creditor has... Uh, last year announced a winding up petition against the group, though the case has dragged on while parties tried to broker a deal uh, outside of court. Well, let's get a check of the day's trading action. Major indices in Europe opened in the red uh, in contrast to a global rally that we saw last week. The FTSE down uh, three tenths, a third of a percent there, and the Paris CAC losing two tenths of a percent. Asia-Pacific markets were mixed. We can see the Nikkei in Tokyo losing about three quarters of a percent uh, and the, the Hong Kong Hang Seng losing uh, over one percent. Uh, the Seoul in Kospi is up though four tenths of a percent. Meanwhile, the price of gold soared to a new record of 2011, uh, $110 per ounce Monday. That's before giving up some gains and now trading at just $2,084 an ounce. Prices of the yellow metal have risen for two consecutive months with the Israel-Gaza conflict boosting demand for the safe haven asset. Analysts say it's on course to hit fresh highs next year. And the state of the economy is shaping up to be a major issue in upcoming elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo. A 20% inflation rate and stubborn joblessness has much of the population fed up. Incumbent Felix Chisikedi is promising to transform the country into the Germany of Africa. Siobhan Silk reports. It's a country rich in mineral wealth, but with a population struggling in poverty. The Democratic Republic of Congo's economic future is a major campaign issue ahead of elections this month. Supporters of incumbent President Felix Tshisekedi believe he's up to the challenge. There is a clear will. He's trying to move forward and boost the country's economy. Around two-thirds of DRC's 100 million people live under the poverty line. And with inflation hitting 22 percent and the Congolese franc losing value against the US dollar, it's only getting harder for people to make ends meet. At the moment, what's getting on my nerves is the rise in the dollar. There are no sales. We buy bananas from suppliers at a high price and there are no sales. I'm losing money. 
There is a certain positive outlook for the DRC. The World Bank is forecasting growth of 6.8% for 2023. That's partly thanks to its position as Africa's largest copper producer and the world's largest cobalt producer. Cobalt is the mineral of the moment, as it's an essential component of batteries for electric vehicles. But most Congolese people aren't seeing the benefit of the cobalt boom. We have increased production. That's very good. That's what makes it possible to increase growth. But this growth is not helping the poor because it's a growth that benefits the political caste, while the population doesn't benefit from it. Transparency International ranks the DRC 166th of 180 countries on its Corruption Perceptions Index. Economists say misappropriation of public funds is not just taking money out of the wallets of Congolese people, but is also frightening off investors. And we'll be uh, keeping a closer eye uh, in the lead up to those elections in the DRC, Haxi. Karis Garland with today's Business News. Thank you very much.